Hello again, Gary Stearman. It's a Monday, April the 9th, and uh, today we're going to talk about Iran. The CIA reports that Iran, surprise, surprise, has expanded its atomic research throughout the year 2011, ahead of uh, anticipated renewal of nuclear negotiations, the CIA told Congress uh, just about three days ago that Tehran continues to pursue, pursue uranium enrichment and missile development. Of course, this comes as no surprise to anyone who can read. Dateline Washington, a Congress Commission CIA report about Iran's nuclear progress, states that the Islamic Republic has expanded its nuclear work in 2011. According to the report, which focused on arms proliferation, Tehran has continued its uh, uranium enrichment program at an increasing rate uh, and is about building a growing nuclear infrastructure in the process. These findings released by the office of the Director of National Intelligence said that Iran has produced 4,900 kilograms, uh, that's way over 10,000 pounds of low-yield enriched uranium, which can in turn then be refined into high-yield uranium. The findings released by the Office of the Director of National Intelligence itself says, quote, Iran continued to expand its nuclear infrastructure and continued uranium enrichment and all activities related to its heavy water research reactor. All of these, of course, are for one purpose and one purpose only, creating a bomb. In other words, Iran is not uh, working to produce nuclear-powered uh, electrical stations. All of this is to create the bomb. <clears throat> uh, another uh, report from Debka file, dateline April 4th, Iranian spokesmen are maneuvering for a postponement of the nuclear negotiations with world powers that are now scheduled to take place April 13th and 14th in Istanbul. It is feared in Washington and Jerusalem that Tehran is working toward two goals. Number one, to, ha to uh, have the venue removed from Istanbul to buy a couple of more months before the diplomatic crunch hits, uh, considering that the U.S. and Israel are treating the April talks as the last chance for diplomacy to reverse Iran's drive for a nuclear weapon. Of course, that last chance would then uh, result in a some kind of an offensive in the Middle East. A postponement would therefore delay any military option that Israel or possibly America would choose to exercise. The Iranians want the site moved to Moscow or to Vienna or to Geneva. At this, these changes would be opposed by Washington because it would consume several more months of preparation before the talks got started. Can we say that the Iranians are stalling? Yes, we can. And, and that's the general view in Washington and in uh, Jerusalem right now. <clears throat> we have here Turkey serving as the United States Isra and Israel's messenger and mediator. The Turkish government will be hated by its citizens if it continues in this role. The Turks have agreed to host nuclear talks. The Turkish population basically favoring the Iranians, is absolutely uh, at odds with its leadership in this. And it is feared in Turkey that there will be street rioting if the talks are held in Turkey. So again, you have to add another uh, complication, another point of tension uh, in the Middle East. But the thing that we have to remember is that the Iranians are working like little termites 24 7 and before long they're going to have not only an atomic weapon but all of the necessary delivery systems we're talking about short medium and even long-range intercontinental ballistic missile systems able to deliver those nuclear warheads they've already uh, got the shahab one and two missiles and they're working on others and could even hit Europe in the near future, it is said. 
Finally, <clears throat> there is that naval drill taking place in the Mediterranean, which we reported on a couple of days ago. Uh, Russia and Iran have military ships in the eastern Mediterranean. The United States has military ships in the eastern Mediterranean. They are both carrying out maneuvers. Uh, the Russians representing Iran, the United States representing Israel. And, quote, and I'm reading from Debka file here, as soon as these military exercises are over, uh, the aircraft carrier strike group will head through the Suez Canal to the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf, raising the number of U.S. aircraft carriers facing Iran to three. Now, three aircraft carrier strike groups positioned south of Iran, along with their accompanying tenders, guided missile cruisers, submarines, uh, represent the maximum extension of United States power. All of this being staged at the very same time that quote-unquote peace talks scheduled to take place in Turkey are failing. Well, I will leave you to try to guess what's going to happen. And of course, we don't know. But it's fascinating to see all of this posturing, building and building and building toward what must be the great invasion that is spoken of, in which Russia, along with Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, Gomer, the House of Togarma, again, that would be the Turks of the North Quarters, and all his bands come together in a clash that is to set the tone for the years that follow. Uh, we have, uh, reaching all the way into the book of Revelation, the... Uh, outgrowths of this great war described by Ezekiel, and it's not a pretty picture. Uh, I hate to even talk about it. I don't want to think about it. I enjoy life. Uh, we are enjoying the blessing of the Lord in a land of peace, and yet, on, on a practical daily basis, uh, looking toward the east, all we can see is war. All we can see is increasing tension, and as I've said practically daily for a long time now. All of this uh, is reflected very, very specifically uh, from the words of the Bible uh, penned 2,600 years ago and now taking place today. It's really, truly amazing. Of course, we're always watching. We will bring new developments to you as they arise. By the way, uh, we are in the process of upgrading this television studio, and, and hopefully we're going to bring to you in the very near future uh, expanded uh, coverage of all sorts and a better format, uh, much more viewable, much more watchable, and we're going to try to expand our network of stations. So uh, we're going to be in a position to bring prophecy in the news to you uh, on a greater and greater scale in the days to come. We've been uh, informing you at several levels on our uh, JR Church Studio Fund, and we have uh, requested your help as we upgrade this studio. And to those of you who have already uh, sent us uh, uh, your contribution Thanks so much. May the Lord bless you. And in the very near future, you're going to see an improvement in these, the picture, the studio, the lighting, everything that uh, brings this, not only this daily update uh, to you, but also the 30-minute television broadcasts that we do weekly. Gary Stearman, have a great day in the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep looking up.